A hacker accessed 35,000 PayPal accounts and PayPal let them right through the door. Or did they? Was it PayPal? Was it the customer? Both? To help answer that, I'm gonna ask you a question. Do you know what Aikido is? What did you say? Aikido is a Japanese martial art. It uses the attacker's energy against themselves. Hackers try to do something similar with an attack called a credential stuffing attack. And no, it's not a delicious Thanksgiving side. It is a type of hack. But instead of using martial arts, they're using a user's bad password practices against them. This is what was used to break into 35,000 PayPal customer accounts. In this video, I'm gonna teach you about a credential stuffing attack, and then I'll show you how to make sure this never happens to you. So here's the deal. If you ask a human to remember all of their passwords by themselves, they are going to lose. You get nothing, you lose. Because of this, humans tend to reuse their passwords because they're easier to remember. Attackers love this. They love it so much that there's an attack technique named after that. That's called credential stuffing. Credential stuffing occurs when a hacker gets a hold of a list of username and password combinations that are typically sourced from other data breaches. This is fairly easy to get. You can buy that on the dark web. You can even get this for free on various hacking forms. So let's use the PayPal hack as an example that shows what a credential stuffing attack looks like once the attacker gets a hold of these usernames and passwords. So as I mentioned before, a credential stuffing attack starts with the hackers trying to get a list of usernames and passwords. From there, it's as easy as just trying to log in with that username and password to an application. In this case, the attackers attempted to log into the PayPal accounts between December 6th and December 8th. Now, obviously the attackers are not doing this manually. They will script this together to try to get as many logins as they possibly can without alerting the company that they're trying to log into these accounts. Now, in the PayPal instance, it's more likely that the attacker had tried to log into hundreds of thousands of accounts. They just successfully accessed 35,000 of those. Those 35,000 reused their PayPal password in another attack, and that's how the attacker was able to log in. Once they logged into the account, it was as if they were logging in as that user. It was the legitimate username and password that was set up. So that means they have access to all of the data that's inside of that account. Now, because it's PayPal and it's financial information, it gets a little bit bad. In addition to having access to the full name and the address of that individual, they also had access to things like the social security number, the tax ID, and the date of birth for that individual. Unfortunately, this is all information that can be used for identity theft. Identity theft is not a joke, Jim. Millions of families suffer every year. So this is obviously not a good thing, and this is nothing that you ever want to have happen to you, so how do you protect yourself? There are four things that you need to do today, whether or not you have a PayPal account. Number one, never reuse your passwords. I cannot say this enough. Stop it. Number two, to help you not reuse your passwords, you should be using a password manager to support generating unique passwords for every single website. Number three, for every website that offers it, enable multi-factor authentication. And for your password manager, make sure multi-factor authentication is enabled for that as well. And for number four, you have the option to freeze your credit. This prevents hackers who steal your identity from opening up accounts in your name. You just have to work with the three major credit bureaus to lock that down. I'll leave some links in the description below so that you can access that directly and do that. Just one word of caution, if you do have a major purchase coming up that is going to require them to access your credit, this will stop that too. So if you put that freeze on there, just make sure that you unfreeze that when you do have a major purchase, like if you're buying a car or if you're buying a home. And that's it. With those four tips, you can protect yourself against these credential stuffing attacks. If you need help with the first three tips on not reusing passwords, using a password vault, and setting up MFA, check out this video here where I'll talk about different options that you have available.